This is Tom Brackey and today I'm talking about the 11 top foods that diabetics keep poisoning themselves with and we're starting now. Let's talk about the glycemic index. The glycemic index measures how quickly a carbohydrate containing food can raise blood glucose levels compared to pure glucose. So if you're eating pure sugar, that's a glucose index of 100. So the higher your glucose index, the worse the food is for you. You want a low glycemic index food. There's three categories of sugary foods. There's high glycemic index foods, which are over 70. These are considered to cause a rapid rise in blood sugar levels. Examples include white bread, most white rices, corn flakes, very sugary cereals, foods that are just coated with a ton of added sugars. Medium glycemic index foods, these have a moderate effect. These are between 55 and 70. Examples include basmati rice, whole wheat products, sweet potatoes, for example, so starchy type foods. And then what we wanna focus on is low glycemic index foods. These foods cause a slower, more gradual rise in blood sugar levels. These are all your healthy foods. So surprisingly, this is most fruits. Even though fruits can get a bad rap, they are pretty low on the glycemic index for the vast majority and vegetables, except for potatoes and the fruits. Things like watermelon are high up there. But also beans are low. These are whole grains. And also in this, this is where lean meats come in. This is where things like eggs come in. So the type of carbohydrate, the amount of fiber, the fat content, the processing, and the cooking method can all contribute to your food's glycemic index. The problem with diabetes is you do need blood sugar. You just need it to be well-regulated. Sugar is the main source of energy in your body's cells, but the problem is if your insulin hormones are not working properly, insulin, for example, has your body take up sugar from the blood, whereas glucagon raises your blood sugar. The problem with diabetics is they either develop so much tissue or their insulin cannot be produced or is ineffective. Type two diabetics, their insulin is just not effective. Whereas type one diabetics due to a genetic issue or potentially an infection, their pancreas cannot make that insulin and they can't lower their blood sugar. About 90% of people are type two diabetics, which these diets can really improve, whereas type one diabetics are a little bit on the lower end of the spectrum. But on the other hand, I've even seen a ton of videos and talked to a lot of type one diabetic specialists and you can regulate it through your diet. Look at famous football players like Mark Andrews from the Baltimore Ravens. He's a type one diabetic and he did a great talk about how managing his foods, he keeps his blood sugar level rock bottom. So eating high glycemic index foods can lead to rapid spikes in blood sugars followed by rapid drops. Your body has a hard time compensating and producing insulin that's effective, especially in type two diabetes, which is by far the most common type around the world. And on the other hand, low glycemic index foods provide a more steady blood sugar level with sustained energy. This can help you manage your weight. And over time, as you lose weight, your body can regulate your insulin and blood sugar levels much better. So this is a very practical video because your dietary choices, we're gonna focus on the low glycemic index foods, balanced meals with high protein, lower fat, higher fiber, and lower sugar levels. And it's important to remember, not everybody's the same. Type one diabetics, especially in that top 10%, are going to have a harder time. But let's count down the top 11 foods with all that in mind. And this is my personal list that I see with patients. Number 11, refined sugars and carbohydrates. Refined sugars and processed foods can rapidly impact blood sugar levels. And when I looked at the calorie intake over the last 100 years, the calories are not going up from meats, they're not going up from eggs, they're not going up from fruits, they're going up from added sugars, added flours, and processed fats. Those three things are what are unhealthy for diabetics. Fructose has gotten a bad rap, and not even that, but added sugars to foods to keep them stable. It's critical when you look at the food label on the back of your foods 
check for added sugar levels. That's possibly the number one most important thing you can do to help regulate your diabetes. Make sure that added sugar level is low, that high fructose corn syrup is low, and focus more on filling foods like whole grains and vegetables. Number 10 in our countdown, white breads. White bread is extremely high in the glycemic index. It lacks fiber. It leads to rapid spikes in blood sugar levels. Opting for lower glycemic index alternatives like whole grain bread or even skipping the bread, eat just the burger meat, that can be very helpful. Number nine, pasta. Pasta is a high glycemic index food. It lacks fiber. There's almost nothing nutritious about pasta. Believe me, I love it. It's delicious. But there's a lot of alternatives. You can use quinoa, you can put broccoli, you can use cauliflower. In fact, if you ever shop at the store Aldi, they have a lot of bean-based or quinoa-based pasta noodles. These are actually pretty delicious. They're a little bit more expensive, but they're worth it if you're a diabetic. Number eight, instant noodles. Instant noodles are high on the glycemic index, just like pasta. It's low nutrition. There's no fiber in there. It rapidly shoots up your sugar levels. There are healthier alternatives like whole grain pasta with better fiber and nutrient content for blood sugar control. Number seven, white rice. White rice's high glycemic index and processing lead to rapid spikes in blood sugar levels. If you know who Arnold Schwarzenegger is, I read his bodybuilding Bible when I was a teenager and he said white rice was the number one most dangerous thing for him and he called it white death because it's pure sugar, pure carbs, and destroys your muscle building and makes you lazy. That's his words, not mine, but I tend to agree. Check out alternatives like the vegetable bases or even brown rice if you have to pick a rice. Number six, processed snacks. This is one of the killers in society. They're easy to reach for, they're delicious, but they're so high in calories. They lack fiber, often containing a lot of added sugar, and they cause quick spikes in blood sugar. Check out protein bars, for example. Protein bars, even though they have some protein in, check out how much added sugar they are. These granola bars at the same time. These are not necessarily healthy for you. All these kids bars, all these prepackaged snacks, even though we know cookies are bad for us, these granola bars, check out how much sugar there is in there, how many calories. That's high on the glycemic index. Don't feed these to your kids. Consider options like nuts, seeds, or fresh vegetables as snacks or even meat as snacks. Number five, sugary breakfast cereals. This is one that is so delicious. I fell into this trap as a kid, but these are extremely high in sugar. And not just that, you're taking milk in on top of that, which is high in lactose, which some people have a hard time digesting, can make you gassy. You have a hard time regulating all that sugar coming in from your cereal, from that milk, rapid spike in blood pressure. Your kid's barely waking up or you're barely waking up and then you're immediately gonna be tired from all that sugar and insulin processing to regulate your blood sugars. Consider healthier options like number one, potentially even fasting through breakfast has been shown to be really healthy or cereals that are high fiber such as whole grain oats. But the reality is when I go to the grocery store now, there's hardly any healthy options. Even the expensive healthy ones still have a ton of added sugar in there something to consider. You can consider full fat dairy products. You can consider dairy products like just drinking a glass of milk potentially by itself, eating some eggs in the morning. That would be a great option, by far a healthier option. Number four, fruit juices. This is so dangerous. Juice is marketed as healthy, but it's not healthy. This is very high in fructose, very high in pure sugar, even natural, even high concentrate. Fruits are healthy when you eat the whole fruit, but fruits in juice form are much less healthy. Even though they still have the nutrients, they're lacking the fiber and those calories are concentrated in there. Now fruit do have fructose in them. That's the thing. Fructose is not great for you, but in the whole fruit, you're just not getting a ton of it. But in the juice, you can keep drinking it and it doesn't signal to your brain that you're full. So for kids or adults, it's very easy to drink a few cups of juice and not feel full at all and then eat another meal on top of that. Dangerous. Number three, pastries and baked goods. Pastries and baked goods are high in refined sugars, lacking fiber, leading to rapid blood sugar spikes. 
The good thing about pastries and baked goods is everybody knows they're not healthy for you. So we at least feel guilty. We save them sp for special occasions. There are healthier options. Again, lean meat options. You can eat vegetables as a snack. You save your cookies for when you really deserve a treat. But just be aware, this is one thing that can sabotage your entire day of being good, eating a few cookies. And not only that, but they're high in trans fats. They're high in processed fats on top of the sugar. So high calorie, high added sugars, no fiber. You don't really feel full from these pastries and cookies. Donuts, croissants, muffins, cakes, cookies. This is what's really contributing to the high calorie effect in our society. A study in the American Journal of Clinical Nutrition found that pastries were one of the single biggest risk factors for type two diabetes. Number two, fast food. This one we already know is bad for us, but when you go to the menu at any of these fast food restaurants, one meal is usually like 1200, 400 calories. That's potentially your entire calorie intake for the day. Now, if you eat like lean chicken, for example, instead of fried chicken nuggets, you're getting like pure protein that gets you full and it's low in calorie. You're burning fat. You're not getting those sugar spikes, but fast food on the other hand, when you're eating the bun, that white bread, that oil, all that stuff spikes your blood sugar level. Get something healthier, like lean meats, for example, foods that are high and fast food items that we're talking about are white bread, buns, the sauces are loaded with sugar, ketchup, barbecue sauce, and pizza dough. They quickly break down into sugars. Now, pizza is one of the biggest offenders here. It's one of the most popular foods around the world and one of the most unhealthy because all dough that breaks down and unhealthy fats like trans fat high weight gain, high insulin. Be aware of those burgers, white buns, French fries, fried chicken, and pizza. A study published in the Lancet Journal says that regular consumption of fast food is linked to extremely high rates of type two diabetes and obesity. You can still get a ton of protein and lean meat. Just go straight to the meat, buy it at the grocery store and make your own burgers, make your own steaks, make your own ribs. The costs are really low on some of these things now. Cheaper than going to the fast food for one meal. I can buy a whole rack of chicken breasts now for less than pretty much what one person costs at Five Guys Burgers or something like that. And number one, the big one, regular soda, and sweetened beverages. Even things like Gatorade, all these sports drinks, anything that you're buying in a bottle, these things are terrible. These are the number one killer. They're filled with fructose, rapid spike in blood sugar. You don't get full. It actually doesn't hydrate you. It does the opposite. The marketing on these things is crazy because they teach you that it's healthy, but it's the opposite. It tires you out because it spikes your insulin. Try some water, try some unsweetened tea. This stuff works really well. You can even try full fat dairy beverages like milk as a better option if you have to drink something. I personally like fizzy water. I got a soda stream machine. I've, I've done a video about how healthy fizzy water is for you. All the tooth effects, things like destroying your bones or your teeth, that's not proven at all. There's no evidence, it's all myths. All these alternatives are great, but sodas are so high in sugar, fructose, and there's absolutely zero nutrition. There's zero density to it, so you never feel full. Regular cola, lemonades, sweetened iced teas. A study in the Diabetes Care Journal found that the single most important thing you can do is quit sugary beverages, and your diabetes and your metabolic syndrome quickly will get better over time. Now, those are the terrible ones. Check out these foods instead. Quinoa, this is a plant-based protein. Use this as a base instead of your pastas. It's got protein, muscle building nutrients, foods like salmon, fish. These are loaded in omega-3s. They reduce inflammation. They enhance muscle strength. They are known for muscle building and less inflammation. Lean beef, these are one of the best nutrients. They have pretty much every nutrient in there in lean beef. It's healthy for you. It's got iron. It's got creatine. The American Journal of Clinical Nutrition says this is one of the best foods for muscle building. Number four, chicken breast. I love chicken breast. It's low cost. It's pretty much pure protein, low fat, and pretty much no sugar in there. 
plus vitamins. This is a staple of strength training. And you want chickpeas if you're a vegan, lots of protein, very little sugar, Greek yogurt, just make sure there's no added yogurts. And my number one food to supplement, it gets you full, it's loaded with nutrition, eggs. If that helped, check out my top seven foods for muscle building and how to turn around your diet below.